ColbyJack.net is proud to present From the Flames by Tricia M. Wilson. The people of the fire, the Blessa, led by their queens, have ruled the island of Alfea and oppressed the Driva, the people of the ice, for more than 16 generations. With the Drivian king in hiding and little hope on the horizon, the Driva looked to one person to save them from the vile Blessa, the Diviana. According to legend, the divinely gifted Diviana will one day overthrow the Blessa and restore the Drivian king to his rightful throne. But with the search having lasted for more than 400 years, will the Diviana ever come to light? Willow is the slave of the Raskpil family. But at the age of four, 20 years have passed since her life irrevocably changed. Her existence is no worse than any other slave. But within, Willow wonders if there isn't something more she should be doing with her life other than serving the ungrateful. Ordered to travel with her master's family to Sondertoft so her master's adult children can take part in an ancient rite of passage, Willow is shocked when she learns that she too must participate. Will she fail as all before her half? Will she rise to the challenge and become stronger after passing through the flames? From the Flames, Episode 17 Twenty minutes later, Willow entered Astrid's study. Astrid was seated on her throne. But today, the fire wasn't blazing as it had been last night. The sun streamed on her, making Astrid look as if she were under a spotlight. Sit, Astrid said, indicating the chair in front of her, also at an angle to the fireplace. Willow sat after leaning Val against the wall near her chair. Astrid waited for Willow to focus her attention on her before she spoke. You have a pressing question you need to ask before we start any discussions. What is it? It's not exactly a question, and it certainly isn't mine. Val, she said, indicating her staff, says you appear very familiar to him. You bear the same name as one of the sorceresses that created him. You look like her. You sound like her. Val would like to know if you are her. Astrid gave Willow a neutral look before saying directly to Val, Sir, do you know how long it has been since you were put in the center of that fire? Four hundred years, give or take a year or two, Val said. Val says about four hundred years, Willow relayed. Do I look more than four hundred years old? Astrid asked. No, but powerful sorceresses might know the secrets to long life. He says no, but that a powerful sorceress may know secrets that will prolong their life, Willow said. Here is the answer I can and will give you at this point. Legend states that those sorceresses were killed days after you were put in place. How could I be a dead woman? Astrid asked. Humph. Even if you don't answer the question directly, I still believe you are. You've aged well over the centuries. What do you do that keeps the wrinkles away? Sacrifice the local villagers and drink their blood? Or perhaps you simply bathe in it? What could your secret be? Val wondered nastily. Mistress Astrid, Val says that why he doesn't believe your answer, he concedes that this is a discussion that can and should be put aside for now. He knows we have more important things to discuss. Willow said, slightly editing what Val had said. It wouldn't do to tell Astrid exactly what Val had said, for who wanted to be accused of bathing in blood? Astrid's smile became even bigger than before. Her eyes danced merrily as if she had heard what Val had said and knew that Willow had edited it liberally. He is quite right. We do have much to discuss. All business, her smile disappeared and her eyes became serious. I know what you were told the night before the search commenced. Hawk told me when his time to search came. I will not be repeating that information. What I am focused on are the sacred objects you are to find. There are five such objects scattered around this island. 
They will enable you to complete the goal of liberating your people. I cannot tell you what most of the objects are or where they are located. Simply be assured that they exist and are waiting for you. What is not commonly known, however, is that one of the objects you must find will give you all the knowledge and teaching you need to find the other four. The Book of Ivy, as it is called, is said to contain all the knowledge of the Blessa and Driva, of their magic and clues to the other objects. Anyone hoping to defeat one or both of these groups needs this information to succeed at their task. Where is this book? How do I get to it? Willow asked. That information I will give you once you have trained a bit and have learned how to use your gifts. What magic have you done? What? Willow asked, thrown at the sudden change in subject. I've, ah, uh, ah, uh, created a boat out of dead wood and vines, and the boat sailed itself to shore. Good. Creating objects might come in handy in the future. Anything else? I don't know if this is magic, but I can make Val transform when I'm angry. You are correct to question if that is magic. It takes magic to transform Val from what he is now to his true form. However, once he was transformed, did you do anything? No, Willow said, looking past Asher to the window. Trees were visible through the window, but they must have been far away, for they didn't interrupt the sun's rays. Well, then, we have a lot of work to do, Asher said. Do you know what powers I have? Willow asked her eyes returning to Astrid's face. No, child, but with some work we shall get them to reveal themselves to us. Come outside with me. Getting to her feet easily, Astrid led Willow down the hall, past the kitchen, and out the back door. The backyard was a large open space, with an old tree stump off to one side. Next to the house was a large pile of wood, a pile that Hawk was replenishing. About a hundred or so yards away from the house, the forest started. It was thick and tall, making it impossible for Willow to see beyond the first few feet. Stopping at the sight of them, Hawk put down the axe he had been wielding as he chopped wood. He opened his mouth to speak, but closed it as Asher strode past him without a word. Hawk looked at Willow in confusion, but she shrugged her shoulders and continued to follow. Abruptly stopping in the middle of the yard, Asher said, Come here, Willow, and motioned Willow to come stand a few feet in front of herself. Willow walked to where Asher indicated. You will face me and show me what you can do when you are angry. No, Willow said, stepping back. I don't know what I'm doing. I could hurt someone. I could hurt you. That would take some doing, child. Now do as I say. Show me how you transform Val when you are angry. Willow looked hard at Asher and opened her mouth to argue. She stopped, however, when Hawk, who was still a distance from them, shook his head slightly. Fighting Astrid would do no good. Fine, Willow huffed, but don't blame me when this blows up in your face. Never, dear. Closing her eyes, Willow concentrated on her slave family in the horrid way they treated her all those years. Opening her eyes the second she felt the electricity flow into Val, she saw that he had transformed into his fire and ice form. Good, Astrid said, her voice quiet but pleased. Keep the anger within and focus on me. Pretend I am the object of your fury. I insulted you. I hurt you. Get me back and hurt me. No, Willow breathed, still trying to keep the anger. I won't. I'd never. Yes, you will, little girl. Or can't you? Are you too weak to do what I tell you? What I order you to do? Perhaps your slave family was right and you are worthless. You are nothing. Willow's head reared back at those words, and something snapped within her. I am not worthless. Her anger, now on Astrid, who unexpectedly looked like Mistress Brigida, erupted. With a yell, both her hands were raised, and something flew at Astrid. As fast as the fury came, it disappeared, taking with it her energy. Falling to her knees with this sudden weakness, Willow didn't know what had happened. She didn't even have enough energy to lift her head to see if Astrid was okay. Astrid? I'm all right, child, Astrid's calm voice said. What happened? Willow asked, finally looking up and seeing that she was indeed unharmed. You threw icicles at me. Slowly pushing herself to her feet, Willow stared at Astrid. What? Icicles? I did what? No need to look so shocked, my dear. 
Astrid said. You are one of the Driva, the people of the ice. The ice and cold are in your blood. That makes it only natural that your magic is ice and snow related. But how did I do that? I mean, throw icicles. What were you thinking and feeling before you went to your knees? Astrid asked instead. Anger. A lot of anger and pain. I wanted to make you feel as I was feeling. I wanted to hurt you. Willow said, feeling ashamed. What type of person was she? Only the worst of mankind wanted to hurt someone as she wanted to at that moment. Emotions are how your powers work. With more practice, you won't need the amount or strength of emotions. Simple acts require at this point. Soon you should be able to think icicles and produce them. To get to that point, however, will require a lot of practice. What other powers do I have? Willow asked, intrigued and scared at the same time. It was exciting knowing she could produce icicles, but scary at the same time. What if she attacked someone accidentally and hurt them because they'd made her angry? Who knows? For now, every day you will practice summoning the icicles and any other weapons of ice that your magic can create. We will work revealing your other skills later. This work is released under Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial Sharealike License. Do what you want with it. Remix it, re-record it, transcribe it, share it. Just don't sell it or change the terms of the license. Your creation must be released under an attribution, non-commercial, share-alike license. Thank you for listening and have a nice day.